Hello, everyone. Today we're going to talk about um, the general pattern of reduction, uh, which is when you you have a list and you want to somehow build something by using the elements of the list. And this is, of course, very abstract, uh, but that's the whole point. And we'll see, we'll understand a bit more detail uh, why that is the case. Uh, but before we do that, I want us to just recap a bit exercise a bit more this idea of recursive algorithms and to do so we're going to um, concatenate two lists we're going to implement a function that concatenates two lists together um, so let's go ahead and do that first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a file at this test there uh, and then we're going to start implementing it Okay, I create a file concat, lang racket. I load the module rack unit just so we have the file. Okay, let's look at the examples. Uh, oops, require. First thing we do is if we have a list with one, two, and the other list is three, four, we get one, two, three, four, right? Similarly, we could have a list with just one element. And uh, we could have a list with no elements, right? Could also have a list with, um, oops, forgot to add the one here. Could have a list with uh, all the elements on the left and no elements on the right. Could also have a, a list that has uh, just a single element on the right. Okay, so we have a lot of tests here, right? Yeah, well, I guess we have all the tests in terms of a list with four elements. One, this for two. Let me just order them. So you have no li no a list with zero, one, two. Oh, we don't have a list with three. We do. Here it is. Three and four. Boom. Okay. So actually, Racket already contains a function like that. So I guess maybe it even works out of the box. But, uh, oh, I did a mistake. Three, four, of course I did. See, this test is wrong. Uh, okay, because the implementation is Racket's implementation, but we want to now define ours. Define, append, uh, left and right. And what it does is to do. Um, and if we call it, now we get lots of errors. Right. Okay. So how do we implement this? Again, recursive, we have to go through all the elements of the list to be able to append them, right? Because we need to copy all the elements of one list uh, into a new list. Um, again, racket is, um, what we're learning is immutable racket, so there's no mutation going on. It's not like you have a list and you keep changing it by adding elements to it. No, we are creating a new one, and therefore we need to go over uh, either the list on the left or the list on the right, uh, either is fine. But we're going to do from the left because we want to. There's no real reason. Okay, so what do we do if we want to range over all elements of a list? Well, we do a cond and we write recursive code, right? And first thing we do is we check if we're in the base case. And if we do, we're going to do something. Otherwise, we're going to do something else. Okay, so if the left-hand side is empty uh, and we append it to a list R, uh, what should happen? Let's see, we have a test case for that. It's the very first one. So if the list is empty, we should return the right-hand side, right? Because we're appending an empty list to a list uh, with, in this case, four elements. We just get that list back. So I'm just going to return right. Okay. Next thing that I'm going to do is uh, now let's think about the recursive case. So we know that if I append um, the rest of the list of L with R, I should get I should get a list with um, you know if I have something like list one two three four, and let's say I have here. Uh, let me just do if the input 
l equals list one, two, three, four, and the right equals list three, four, then the rest of l equals list two. And by the magic of recursion, if the whole algorithm is correct, that means if I do a, a recursive call, then I'll get uh, the correct result of appending list L with right. So L is two, right is three, four. That means the result is gonna be a list two, three, four, right? Because that's, that's the idea of the nice thing about recursion, right? If you implement it correctly, you can assume that the, um, the recursive call is correct and reason about its result uh, this way. Okay, so here we know that we got the, we appended the rest of the list with the right hand side. So now what we need to do, we need to add the first element of the list. So what is the first element of the list? First of all is gonna be uh, one. Okay, so how do, if I have a list with two, three, four, how do I add one on the left hand side, right? Because we wanna maintain the order. Well, that's very easy, right? We just do cons. Cons of first of all, um, and this, okay. Now if we run it, we got parentheses, of course. Oh, the beauty of parentheses. Okay, this is right, one here, okay. Oh, it works at the first try, okay. So I hope by now you are able to reason about an algorithm recursively. Also note that when you're thinking about it, you know, if when you're thinking about a recursive algorithm this way, where you assume that the um, if I call a function recursively and it, I, if I assume it's correct, I can kind of build it back to to what it's um, supposed to do. So in this case, what I did was okay. So assuming that append list of rest of l with r is this, right? So this is would be the recursive call results okay uh, and then what i thought w and then so i thought backwards right i assume that my recursive call is correct and yields the the right the result i'm expecting and then the the objective of the algorithm becomes very simple it's just okay so what do i need to do to kind of get the the final results back and this is actually if you think about it and if you think about your math classes this is exactly the idea behind an inductive a proof by induction where if you assume basically that's what you have to do in a proof you have um when you're doing in the when you're doing the proof by induction you assume you have let's say n and you want to prove that for n plus one works and that 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 delta where where you're basically the proof of showing oh if i have n how do i build n plus one is exactly exactly what's going on here and this connection i think is interesting um because people sometimes think that, you know, math is completely useless, uh, you know, quotation mark, like, why would I ever need uh, uh, to learn about proofs? Well, here is one example. It actually is capturing recursion is very much connected to um, a proof by induction. Uh, because it does mirror, uh, you know, in a proof by induction, you also have this notion of a base case and the recursive step, the inductive step, right, which is exactly what you have in it when you're implementing a function and reasoning about a data type that is uh, recursive, such as the list. Okay, so now the next question is, um, so this is the solution I got. Uh, then the question is, is this example uh, tail recursive? And by now you should be experts, you should just look at here and even less than a second, you can decide that this is not tail recursive because the tail call is cons and it should be append for it to be tail recursive. So we also learned in our last lesson, the last two lessons, about um, how to convert append to um, a tail recursive optimized version. So in the next video, I'm gonna go through that and we're gonna see if we can find this general pattern of reduction.